everybody, Leah Freeman here with Lonza Healing Hair Care. And today you're joining me at the Salon Centric Education Loft in St. Pete, Florida. And today we're gonna to share with you a technique called underlay here on Caitlin. So what we're gonna start with first is as you can see in her before, she's been previously lightened and we wanna make her a little bit lighter. So this technique is based on creating a lot of depth and dimension coming from underneath and a slight veil of color on top. All right, so before we get started here, the most important part when you're doing something called underlay or creating color coming from underneath, it's important to know where the part is at. So first and foremost, when you talk to your guests, find out where they're parting at. So does it make a difference? And the answer is yes. So this technique is definitely based off a part. So before we start, we're gonna go ahead and do an ultimate treatment. So there's three steps to ultimate treatment. Step one is gonna cleanse the hair of any impurities, any additional product, build up in the hair to make sure that we're working on a clean palette. Then we have our step two. You're gonna pump step two into your hands and then add boosters to them. The boosters we chose were strength and moisture. We left that on for five minutes, then we rinsed, and then we sprayed Power Protect over the top just so we can glide the comb through the hair and create a nice balanced canvas. As we start this color service, we're gonna leave the hair damp. Purpose four, so that way when we're actually creating the seamless transition with the decolorizer, it's gonna go up into the hair and leave no lines of demarcation. Number two, it's a lot easier. So when applying decolorizer to damp hair, you will find that not only is it easier, but you will use a lot less product. So as we start, we talk to Caitlin about how we wanted to do the technique and we had to find out where her part was at. So speaking to your guest about this technique is imperative. Starting at her part line, we're gonna take a fine section, dipping all the way back, gliding the comb through the Prada Ridge area, drawing it to the other side of the head. So taking our comb, starting at a fine point, dipping all the way down, passing the halfway marker of the head. By the time we're done doing that, we then wanna go straight up and over to the front of the part line. Once you're done doing your part, I'll go ahead and spin her around. You wanna make sure that you eliminate the additional hair and clip it off. The idea of this technique is you want an explosion of color coming from underneath and this veil over the top. So as you can see, we're very heavy handed on the left side of the head. That way that spray of color will come from underneath and as we turn her, it gets a little bit finer and then denser on the right side of the head. It's important too, whenever you're doing a hand paint, that you wanna make sure that the hair is always combed out. If there's any knotting in the hair, this will also create spots within your color service. So make sure before you get started that the hair is beautifully combed out. So in our bowl here, we have Lanza Powder Decolorizer, equal parts with color cleansing shampoo and 20 volume peroxide. The reason why we're doing our source of something called a beauty bath is because we want to create a little bit more lightness, but we want some control. What I like about the color cleansing shampoo, it allows me to glide through the hair with the decolorizer and the 20 volume peroxide, which is gonna give me a seamless transition in my balayage. Starting at the base of the head, I'm gonna take a section that's about one inch in width and about one inch in depth. If you take sections that are too thick, you're gonna lose your lift. So the finer the section, the more the lift. So I'm gonna start just at the base of the nape, pulling up a one inch section, working in the center. So starting at the center of the head, I'm gonna go ahead and become heavy handed to the right, the left side, slightly in the center on this one inch section. As I come down through the mid lakes and ends, I'm gonna take one of my Lanza color films. Now these films, what I like about them are, is they're reusable. So I'm gonna go ahead and rest this down. And paint the ends. Once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna pull my section up. I'm gonna take my fingers and now I'm gonna scrub with my fingers to create a seamless transition. Really making sure that I'm pushing that color in the center. Here, activating that surfactant in my shampoo. This is also gonna help with that delivery of seamless transitional color. Once I'm done doing that, 
take the film that I used previously, and then go ahead and lay that down. Now I'm gonna go to the left side. I was heavy handed on the left side of the strand, the right side of the strand, and now the center. Now that I'm working in the corners, I want an explosion of lightness coming from underneath. So I'm gonna be very heavy handed to just the left side of the strand. So pick up that same section. Paint the left side, slight the right side, but heavy on the left, all the way up to almost the hairline. Again, picking up my film. Dropping it down, saturating the mid-lengths and ends. Pull up my section, scrub. And as you can see on this strand right here, we're starting to see a really beautiful lift. Again, place my film down. So the great thing about these films are is they're reusable. So once we're done with these films, we'll wash them, dry them, and then reuse them on another color service. A really great way of creating a green statement in your salon. Now we're on the right side. My hair is starting to dry a little bit, so at this point I'm going to go ahead and just wet her down a little bit. Again, paint now the right side, the center, Get my film, grab my section. Again, leaving that center out. So the idea is if you look at it from the perspective of going forwards, it looks like we've created that W like we like to see in a traditional hand paint and balayage. Take down my next section. Again, one inch partings. Now that we're in the center section here, if she were to pull her hair up, it's the areas here that I have to be most concerned about when it comes to how that's gonna look from underneath. In the center section, I'm just looking for a lot of lightness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, spray down my section again with water because I need this a little bit damper. I'm gonna split this into two sections, right and left side. I'm gonna paint right side, left side, center. Saturate ends. Again, pick up my section. Scrub, leaving my center out. Scrub, as you can see, when I'm doing this, I'm not creating any holidays or, li or lifting of any hair strands because all the hair is wet. So by keeping the hair wet, I don't get any floaters, which is awesome when you're doing balayage. So again, now I'm gonna pick up my right side. I'm gonna paint heavy left, center, heavy right. Citrate ends. So now that we're on the side, it's important to know that we want the color to lay very, very heavily. So the way we create weight and color is by always applying it with horizontal lines versus diagonals or verticals. If you're looking for stripier color, think about placing these in going on a vertical, which works really, really well on hair that's very, very dense. In this circumstance, we don't have a ton of density, so we want to create the feeling of density with color, and that's the reason why we're going to go in on a horizontal. So simply all you want to do is go ahead and start right behind the ear, knowing that the hair is going to lay naturally, a natural fall, pulling out about a one inch to half inch in depth section. Now, the sections can change in density depending on how dense the hair is. In this circumstance around her ear, the density isn't there. So we want to make sure that we're creating a little bit more section of density so that way the work that you're putting in is a little bit easier. I'm gonna go ahead again and spray down. Now I wanna create a lot of lightness coming off her face, so this is important. Take your section, over direct it backwards. Take your glove, place your lightener on your glove. By doing this, it's gonna create an even amount of color both on the top and the bottom of the brush. Use the back of the brush and push. Roll 
right onto the hairline. So I'm over directing, I'm lightly gliding my color at the hairline all the way straight back. Once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna go back into horizontal natural fall directly out from the head and I'm gonna apply a lightener, my decolorizer on the white right side of the strand, then the center as I push up. This is called scrubbing, so you're gonna be scrubbing the color. So again, over direct, apply your decolorizer all the way to the hairline, bring it back right from the natural fall, push to the center and slightly push up on the right side. Once I'm done doing that, use my fingers again, scrubbing my decolorizer in or my beauty bath in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and continue with saturating the ends. Again, next section down, horizontal slice. Over direct the section going backwards. Paint the whole entire right side. Scrub that decolorizer in and then saturate the mid links and ends. You'll continue going up the side of the head on a horizontal pattern. Now that we're on the right side of the head, we want to continue up doing the same exact thing we did on the left side. So again, taking half inch partings to one inch partings, depending on the density of the hair, making sure the hair is slightly damp. So in this circumstance, as we can see, Caitlin's hair is a little bit dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and just Wet it down a little bit, taking my section, making sure I'm combing it, over directing to the left. Bring it back, stand behind the section. Scrub with your fingers and as you can see, that's why it's important to have the hair a little bit wet because it'll start to activate that surfactant in the color cleansing shampoo. And then go ahead and saturate the mid links and ends. Here's a tip with the colorizer. If you're trying to create lighter ends, oversaturate them. If you're looking for even transitional color, just keep the saturation rate this is exactly the same from scalp to ends. But if you want lighter ends, just use additional decolorizer. So now we're at the hairline and I wanna create an explosion of color coming off the base. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of more water here at the retouch area that's gonna help with that transition of color melting happening. And also too with her hair, as you can see, she's got these little baby hairs. So I wanna make sure I pick those up and that will help if they're wet. I'm now gonna take again my, my brush, using the back of my hand to make sure that the lightener or decolorizer is evenly saturated on the top and the bottom of the brush. I'm gonna pull this straight up. I'm actually gonna comb it first. I'm gonna comb it up and into place straight up from the head. Applying the decolorizer all the way up. Creating a little bit of multi-leveled color here around the face. So I'm actually going up and down. At this point, I'm gonna take a foil because I can lay it over the top of this section and then paint the ends. So in this circumstance, I want to do this piece last because I want everything to go backwards. It just makes it easier for processing and it's less opportunity for her to touch it. I've always noticed whenever I lay a lot of foils in the face, you have to make sure that our guests can see because if they can't, they'll make it easy for them to see. So I wanna be in control of this circumstance, especially that I'm painting something that's so deliberate around the face. So right now, what I would normally do is I would stand behind her. So I would actually, I'm gonna go this direction if that's okay. I would be standing behind her as I'm painting her and I would have her scoot forward. For film though, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it this direction so that way you guys can see clearly how we're gonna paint it. 
But normally, I would have her scoot forward, if you don't mind. Scoot your butt forward. Yep, excellent. And then if you could sit back. So that way now I can be in position and I'm comfortable and she's also comfortable. So this is, works really, really well when we're doing this type of technique. Again, wetting the hair down, making sure the brush has the right amount of product on it. And I would go in and begin to hand paint or scrub the decolorizer. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing some levels of my brush all the way down, leaving some of it up, some down, some up to create a lot of lightness towards the base. Painting the top and the bottom of the strand. So I'm literally going in and creating like shallow, like mountains and rivers, mountains and rivers, mountains and rivers. So you have like those valleys in the hair. Again, taking a foil, placing it underneath, keeping that hair popped up from the retouch area and then saturating the mid links and ends. What I love about this color track foil is that this foil is actually the extra long ones. I tend to use these a lot when I'm dealing with longer lengths of hair. I prefer to work on a flat surface versus a very short surface. So whenever I'm trying to create really, really super light, light blondes, or lighter color in general, or transitional color, your foil length is really super important. So the extra long color track ones tend to work the best. Here's my next section. This time I'm gonna keep a little bit more of the center out and paint both the right and left side. And because the strand's a little bit thicker, I suggest because you're working directly up from the head to paint the front and the back of the strand. So to conclude the service, all we would do at this point is we'd watch it. So again, we used our powder decolorizer, equal parts with 20 volume and our color cleansing shampoo. We did a pre-treatment on the hair first and we eliminated the whole entire, most of the crown and top of the head. Going through, painting the color on very heavily, all the color focused around the face. Again, this is a really great technique to introduce consumers or guests to color that have never had a color service or are looking for little bits of interest of flecks of color. Now that we've completed the service with Caitlin, all we're gonna now do is finish up the rest of her color. So at our base, we've decided to go in with Healing Color 7cc, 30 grams, with two grams of 4G. We're gonna be using 20 volume. The purpose for those 4G is so that way, when you're using 20 volume on a lighter level of hair, it won't just take the color out, but it'll also maintain a little bit of depth without destroying any vibrancy. Through the mid lengths and ends, we're gonna go through and we're we'll create a skipping pattern of color uh, with Lanza liquids. Our first formula is 30 grams of 010 RR and one gram of R mix with 31 grams of activator. Our second formula through the skip will be five grams of 06 CC to 25 grams of 010 RR. Then our third one will be equal parts 06 CC with G mix and equal parts activator. We're gonna go ahead and do that all through the mid lakes and ends. On the top here, we'll conclude the service on the base with 7NC with 20 volume, pulling through 06CC equal parts G mix to the mid lakes and ends. Let's get started. All right, so starting in the nape area, we're gonna go ahead and begin to color melt our colors together. So there's a couple important key facts whenever you're doing melting. The most important one though is the sections need to be fine. If the sections are thick, you're more likely to get spots. So whenever you're doing a color melt, fine sections will create consistency, but most importantly, no spotting. So I'm gonna pick up my first section starting in the nape area, and I don't wanna lay color on our skin just because it's just important for us to protect our gas as much as we can. So I'm gonna go ahead again, lay down my foil that's slightly longer than the area that I'm working in. In this circumstance, I always recommend to make sure your foils are at least the length, if not longer, than your section. I'm gonna start with one of my several colors, which I'm gonna start with my darkest of my shades, because what I wanna do is I wanna appear lighter towards the face and start to get more depth towards the back. The reason why I like to do that is I find that a lot of guests with finer textured hair, if the hair is over lightened on the bottom, it'll make it look really, really fine. So by creating a little bit of depth on the bottom portion of the hair, it'll make the hair look a little bit denser. So I'm gonna slightly overlap 
my 06cc and G mix here. Pushing those two shades together. Dragging that color down. And then just on the ends, I'm gonna add a little bit of petal, just like petally pink color. So we go into a beautiful, strong copper, into a strong, strong copper, into a, like a petally pink. Now I'm gonna leave all my foils open because if they touch, they'll marry. And marriage of color is the best way to me to do a color melt. If you separate the sections, you can get a spot. It also gives you a great resource to look at on your previous section to see what you've done. Now remember when doing color melting, the more erratic you are with your application, the better the results are gonna be. So try not to get too married to three shades. I like to mix the shades up constantly so that way when the hair is curled or it's flat ironed or left straight or however it looks, it still looks really beautiful and great transition. So again, working those two colors together. You'll notice I'm actually holding the hair up from the head. I don't wanna push it down. Pushing it down will definitely create some type of weird transition. So I wanna make sure this, the sections are separated. I'm gonna to begin to just pull those two colors together. And this time I'm gonna pull it through her ends, but I'm just gonna leave the very, very tips out of this like lightness and, and create less of a saturation. So same color, lighten up the amount of saturation going through the ends. Next section again, fine section. Start with my darkest color on the top. This is gonna be my darkest portion of the whole entire strand, which is the center back of the head. Again, using my 06cc, equal parts with my G mix. Again, pushing those two colors together. Really marrying those. Pulling that color down. And then on my back of my hand, I'm now gonna use my one gram of R mix with 30 grams of 010 RR. So as you can see, I'm reapplying a little bit of my 7cc and 20 volume, because I do want a little bit of additional color to kind of marry those two shades together. I'm gonna continue using those three different shades and all different patterns going around the face. Now, once I get closer to the front of the hairline, We'll come back and we'll talk about why we chose to go lighter and how to place those lighter pieces so they hit her skin perfectly. Here's another good tip whenever you're applying color to the mid lengths and ends and you're trying to do a color melt. So as you can see, I'm now starting to do more of the lighter colors as I'm moving towards the face, but I'm still maintaining the level seven into the level six, even though we think level six is darker, it is to a degree, but we're using a very, very bright copper. So whenever you're dealing with transitional color and the base is a little bit darker. I like to go a little bit richer on the level of the copper on the second piece. So as I'm going through, I'm taking vertical sections. Vertical sections will lay really beautifully together because they'll lay on top of each other. If I went horizontally, the color would look too weighted. So going vertically will create dimension through the length. So I'm taking my vertical base sections, still keeping them quite fine and I'm pushing them back, reapplying my original base color just a little bit further down the strand uh, so that way I can begin that transition. Applying my color, my six level hair color with my G mix to the mid shaft area and I'm lessening up that length as I go closer and closer to the face. So before, as you knew, I dragged it quite a bit down, now I'm going less and less. Marry those two colors together then I open up my palm. I'm using my one pinky color, going backwards and forwards. I cross hatched over the previous section. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, cross hatching over the previous section. The most important part about what I'm doing right now is actually the over direction of the strand. because I'm pulling this direction, it's gonna make it mesh together. So again, taking my vertical section, picking it straight up from the head, applying my little bit of my base color that we talked about earlier, 7cc. Dropping it down a little bit, applying my level six, starting to lessen up the amount of level six that I'm applying, marrying those two colors together, over directing the strand to the palm of my hand, beginning to color mesh back and forth, and again, cross hatching my two shades together. Cross-hatching will help with saturation, but also too, 
the really beautiful seamless blend. All right, now that we're around the hairline, the closest portion to her face, I wanna make sure that the colors that lay on it are the most appropriate for her skin. So to me, peaches and pinks are gonna be the best. So at this point, we're gonna eliminate any further level six copper in this area, because it might look just a little bit too hot on the skin. So again, I'm gonna go ahead, do my root stretch. And this time when I follow up, I wanna drop the strand down just to kind of see where this is gonna lay. It's gonna lay directly on the skin. This area here, I wanna make sure is that petally pink color. So I'm gonna petally pink this area here and then go through the copper on the ends. If you're ever in a situation where a customer wants a color that lays on the skin that doesn't look the best, or areas of that color you know will look better, take the area that's the most appropriate that lays on the skin and put it there. Everywhere else, put the other colors around it. It's a really good way of being able to give them what they want and make them look the best with their skin tone. Now, as I leave these little ends out, I'm gonna do a little hint of gold on these ends just to kind of create a little bit of interest that I know she's gonna love. I'm gonna continue taking my vertical sections all the way around the face until we get to the other side. All right, now that we've finished uh, Caitlin's hair, now we're gonna let her process room temperature for about 35 minutes. It's always suggested to process your color from the last section that you completed. So that we complete the top of the section, we now know that 35 minutes is probably appropriate. So we'll go ahead and let her process at room temperature, and we'll see you back. Now that we finished Caitlin's hair, now you can see all the different colors that we placed all the way from scalp to ends. You can also see how the colors are very transitional, which is nice. The smooth blending happens, again, all based on how we applied the color at the base and pushed that color through and then made sure that we color melted it all the way out. I think most importantly though, when you're doing these type of color melts, remember the tones that you choose will determine your finished look. So if a guest might not wear this exact color, remember you can do the same exact technique with any color palette you want. If you have any other questions or like to learn more or see some tips and tricks, make sure you visit us at ProBeautyCentral at salonsetric.com.